Hello and welcome to this fundamental series on using HTML5 and CSS3 to build web pages. This series is designed for somebody who has little or no experience with HTML or CSS but wants to get a quick overview of the major HTML5 elements as well as CSS3 selectors and properties and wants some hands-on practice uh, as well in building web pages. If the terminology that I just used is a little foreign to you, perfect, you're in the right spot. I'll explain everything in due time. So my name is Bob Tabor and I typically talk about C Sharp, Visual Basic, ASP.NET and other related .NET topics on my website www.learnvisualstudio.net. HTML5 and CSS3 are foundational topics that you're going to need to learn prior to learning popular web technologies like JavaScript and ASP.NET. So I'm excited that Channel 9 has invited me to create this series of videos. It's extremely important that you learn these concepts. Soon you'll be able to build not only web pages but also native Windows 8 user interfaces using only HTML5 and CSS3. So it, it'll become increasingly a more and more vital skill uh, beyond web development. If you're already working with HTML and CSS and you just want to learn what's new in HTML version 5 and CSS level 3, then this is probably not the right place to start. I imagine that you're looking for a what's new in HTML5 or what's new in CSS3 and that is not what this series is all about. This is going to cover material that you probably already know as well as the most pertinent HTML5 and CSS3 additions for absolute beginners to web development. So again, your time is probably better spent somewhere else, quite frankly. All right, so here's what I want to accomplish in this series. We're going to start by building a complete example. Uh, now, we're not going to win any design awards, but it's still going to get us busy typing away uh, and writing both HTML5 and CSS3. And then next I'm going to dissect the HTML5 syntax and in the course of this discussion I hope to change any preconceived ideas that you might have about web design. Perhaps you're thinking I'm going to show you how to create beautiful web pages. Uh, that's not exactly what I'm going to do here. My focus is going to be on creating semantically correct web pages. That is at the heart of the newest features that have been added and offered by HTML5. If you don't know what I mean by that, then I assure you by the end of the series it'll become firmly cemented in your mind. Then we're going to talk about topics most developers skip over thinking that they're not all that important like doc types and validation and char sets, uh, M's versus pixels versus percentages and other geeky stuff. It's the good stuff that makes most normal people's eyes glaze over whenever you talk to them about it. And then we're going to talk about the importance of separating structure from aesthetics by separating out the work that we delegate to HTML5 from the work that we delegate to CSS3. We're going to discuss cascading style sheets and demonstrate many categories of properties that can be modified uh, by the styles that we create. We're going to talk about the syntax, the units of measure, how to build reusable styles, and other best practices and a bunch of other fun stuff. So my hope is that by the end of the series you're going to be able to look at a web page that was developed by somebody else and you'll be able to make sense of it. Uh, you'll be able to pick it apart, understand what they did, what technique they used, and you'll learn from them uh, as a result. My hope is that this series gets you oriented in the right direction towards learning more about web development and to that end, in the final lesson in this series, I'm going to give you a list of about a dozen or so hot topics and other resources where you can continue on in your self-study. So let me give you a quick caveat before we begin. My goal is to teach you the basics of HTML5 and CSS3 in this course. However, I simply can't teach you how to make an aesthetically beautiful web page design because frankly, I don't know how. Uh, when I need an attractive, beautiful web page for my website. I work with a graphic designer or find a template and then license that for my website. When I worked in uh, corporate environments and built intranet applications using HTML and CSS, JavaScript and ASP.NET, the company usually had a team of web designers 
uh, that designed the web page background, the text, the images. And sometimes they did this by using a tool like Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. After the management team approved their designs, then they would give it to the developers who would then splice up and implement that design using just HTML and CSS. Now as a result, I got pretty good at taking somebody else's vision and their design and then implementing that in HTML and CSS code. Uh, there are many courses, there are many websites, there are many books that would love to teach you how to become a graphic designer. That is not what we're gonna do here in this series. You'll be learning from a decidedly developer-centric perspective, okay? Furthermore, this series is not meant to be an exhaustive reference for HTML5 or CSS3. Beyond the standards document that all web browser vendors are encouraged to follow, I'm really not familiar with any single best source for this information. I'm sure there's one out there, but what I usually do is uh, I know that something exists, I need a little more information about it, and then I just go out on the internet and do a search on my favorite search engine. Uh, and fortunately, there are tens of thousands of websites that post HTML and CSS tips and tricks and I generally purchase a book or maybe I'll find a little cheat sheet on the internet that'll help me remember the syntax of a given element or what have you. These are all helpful and perhaps in the comments below, you and your fellow students can exchange links for the best resources that are out there. Finally, there are many great tools that'll help you to author web pages. There are even free tools from Microsoft that provide many amenities as you create your code, including HTML and CSS hints as you type, a design view that allows you to get a quick preview of your web page without having to load it into a web browser, and a lot more. However, just to keep things extremely simple, I'm gonna utilize two tools that I know that you already have installed on your Windows computer, no matter whether you're running Windows 95 or running the latest, greatest operating system. I'm gonna be using Notepad, that's right, just Notepad, and Internet Explorer. I'm gonna type the code into Notepad, I'm gonna save the file, and then I'm gonna open it up in Internet Explorer. Now, since this is a series of videos on HTML version five, you're gonna need a web browser that'll support HTML5, so you're gonna need a relatively newer release of Internet Explorer. I'm gonna be using Internet Explorer 9.0 and you should feel confident using version nine or later if it's available to you. All right, after you finish this course, assuming that you are gonna progress down a developer track and not a graphic designer track, I'd recommend following up by learning about JavaScript and a great place to learn about JavaScript is my JavaScript Fundamental Series, which is also free here on Channel 9. And then with my C Sharp or Visual Basic Fundamental Series, also here for free on Channel 9. Then you should finally be able to move on to ASP.NET, and I have a number of great ASP.NET courses on my own website, www.learnvisualstudio.net. Please free, uh, feel free to drop, uh, drop by and check it out. Uh, if you follow that path, you're going to be well positioned to build dynamic, data-driven websites for small business clients or work in an IT department as a software developer uh, at larger enterprises. Again, I'll have more to say about where to go from here at the very end in Lesson 18. Okay, before we get started, the videos embedded on the webpage on Channel 9 uh, are presented somewhat smaller than how I originally record them, which is in high def, 1280 by 720. Now I'll increase the font size of the text that I type in the notepad. However, if the text seems obscured or difficult to read, then it may have to do with the speed of your internet connection. In that case, you may wanna download the videos to your computer first and watch them there. Also, you should be able to watch full screen. Take a moment to make sure uh, you can see where to download the code on the pages that you're currently viewing uh, these videos from, where you can download the video itself, how to go full screen in the video's player controls, and so on. Finally, you are in control of the viewing experience. To get the most out of this or any video series, you should become an active learner. Uh, type the code in yourself to build muscle memory and to force your brain to understand what it is that the speaker is attempting to explain. Pause, 
rewind the video, ask questions in the comments area below the video. Active learners always learn more quickly. Commit the time and you'll have these ideas under your belt in no time at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. In the next lesson, we're going to build our first HTML5 web page. That's pretty exciting stuff. I want to encourage you to get a plan in place to follow along and enjoy the entire process of learning. You can do this. It's fun, it's exciting, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.